let's welcome the woman of God to the podium. Oh, Praise is that Lord. what you can do? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Be seated in the presence of Christ. Hallelujah. The atmosphere is definitely soaked. Hallelujah. We continue from where we left off the last time. We, we started talking about moving from the place where you are desirably to where God wants you to be. And the last time we spoke about the life of Jacob, and today we're going to pick it up from the life of David. I see so many of you are drunk. That's why I just want to leave you drunk in the Holy Spirit like this. But please, as much as you can, do continue writing in your journals and with your pens ready with your Bibles as well. The book of First Samuel chapter 17 is my anchor scripture this morning. First Samuel chapter 17. We're going to take it from verse 24 to verse 27. We are moving from the place where we are to the place where we need to be, where we are meant to be. Hallelujah. And we explore the life of David. What was the experience of David? What did we learn from David? And it reads as follows. Take the music down a bit. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. So the men of Israel said, have you seen this man? Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come to defy Israel. And it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches, will give him his daughter and give his father's house exemption from taxes in Israel. Wouldn't we like that? How many of you would like Sars to ignore you for a little bit? Then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should divide the enemies of the living God? Verse 27, and, he's, and the people answered him in this manner, saying, So shall it be for the man who kills him. Verse 34 to 36 of 1 Samuel 17 says, But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep, and when a lion or bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it, and I struck it, and I delivered the lamb from its mouth. When it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck, and I killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. I'm going to make mincemeat out of him. Seeing as he has defied the armies of the living God. When you have to move from where you are to where you are meant to be, you are undoubtedly going to face obstacles. You're going to face lions. You're going to face bears. You're going to have to stand up and remind the devil of what you have done. You're going to have to remind the devil of the reputation of your lineage of where you come from. You come from the lineage of David who killed lions and bears, who killed the Philistines. There was no giant befitting to stand before him. Hallelujah. So one thing that you can take away as a lesson from a summary of David's life is that it was a life of success against all odds. He was determined that he was going to succeed no matter what. The first thing when you are tracking through the scriptures that comes out so clearly is that David was a passionate lover of God. We meet a man who we are introduced that we are told he was a man after God's own heart. First Samuel 13, 14 says, but now your kingdom shall not endure. The Lord has sought out for himself a man, a man. He has sought out for himself a man. He sets apart those that love him. A man that is passionate about the things of God and the kingdom of God cannot help but be sought after by God and protected by God. He protects his own. He gives them free life insurance. He says he sought out a man called David who was after his own heart. A God that says, I appointed this one. I understand that there's other kings, but this one I appointed for myself. I'm appointing David to be a leader and a ruler amongst my people. My people deserve a ruler like David because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. So Saul was of necessity going to lose his throne because he did not obey the Lord. Acts 13 verse 11, it says, Now watch. The hand of the Lord is on you and you will be blind. 
so blind you will be, unable to see the sun for a time. Immediately, a mist and darkness fell upon him, and he groped around, seeking people to lead him by the hand. Please make a note of Psalm 63, verse 1 to 2. Oh God, you are my God. With deepest longing will I seek you. This is a man that prays, a David, that is so passionate about prayer. He says, my spirit, my, self, my flesh longs and sighs for you. I, in a dry and a weary land where there's no water, I'm just satisfied as long as I have you, God. And in Psalm 42, you find the same man praying again. He says, as the deer pants and longs for the water brooks, so my soul pants and longs for you, my God. My soul, my life, my inner self thirsts for God, for the living God. When will I come and see the face of God? It reads like poetry, but these are the prayers of a man that was passionate about God. A man that loved God so much that whenever he opened his mouth, he could not help but just poetry just came out of his mouth. The love that he had for God. One thing I have asked of the Lord and I will seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. My desire is that I remain in the presence of God all the days of my life so that I can gaze at the beauty of God, so that I can gaze at the anointing at his most majestic grandeur. I just want to see the splendor called God. And I just want to sit there and meditate upon his word in his temple. The second thing that you see and that we learn about, aside from the love that he had from God, we also see that he was a psalmist. He was the sweet psalmist of Israel. David, the son of Jesse, declares, the man who was, on a ra who was raised on high, declares, the anointed of God of Jacob, a sweet psalmist of Israel. That's 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 1. He was the sweet psalmist of Israel. Psalm 119, verse 164. 119, verse 164. He says, seven times a day will I praise you because of your righteousness ordinances. Some of us, we can't even dare to go through two praises. God, I praise you. You just woke up in the morning and you said, oh God, this guy, seven times a day, I will just stop and just praise you for no reason not because you gave me a testimony but I just want to stop and pause and say God I praise you you're just amazing you're just amazing now the third thing that I want you to note in your journals is that David was an addict but not an addict of drugs or alcohol but he was an addict of the house of God he was an addict of the house of God. The book of Psalms 1 to 2, verse 1 to 2 says, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad. He was always excited for anything that had to do with the house of God. Talk to me, somebody. And Psalms 84, one of his Psalms, Psalms 84, verse 7 tells me, they say they go from strength to strength, increasing in victorious power, each of them that appears before God in Zion. He teaches us every time we go into the house of the Lord that we increase in strength. This is a man that moved to the dimensions of where God wanted him to be. In Psalms 84, verse 10, he says, For a day in your courts is better than a thousand years elsewhere. I would rather stand as a doorkeeper as the th at the threshold of the house of my God than to live at ease in the tents of wickedness. I would rather be found in the house of God than be found in a drunken stupor way. I'd rather be found in the house of God than be sitting with prostitutes and doing all sorts of things that will make me defile the body of God. I would rather be found in the courts of God. He was a man with priorities. He was settled in his priorities. What do we take as a learning from this is that until you are settled in the priorities that God has given you, you will not take authority. You cannot have authority until your priorities are set straight. I trek with the same David. I saw that he was not only just a psalmist, but he was a prayer champion. He was a kingdom prayer champion. I found in the book of Psalms 55 verse 17, he says, evening, morning, and at noon, I will 
pray and I will hear his voice and he will hear my voice. Talk to me somebody. In Psalms 52 he says save me O God by your name and vindicate me by your wondrous power. Hear my prayer. Hear my prayer not my complaining. Oh God listen to the words of my mouth. A prayer champion. In Psalms 3 verse 4 he says with my voice I was crying to the Lord and he answered me from his holy mountain. Ah David was prayer personified. If you wanted to see a man's personality, this was a man who prayed. He prayed in song, he prayed in words, he prayed in poetry. There was nothing that was not prayerful about him. And we have seen in the book of Psalms that he was a specialist in the judgmental prayer. There are some prayers in the book of Psalms that when you pray them, you can hear that you are in warfare. You can literally see the walls crumbling down. Ah, uh, Time will fail me for me to get into Psalms 91. But nevertheless, let us continue. I see a man called David who was a giant killer, a fearless person. He was fearless. He was a lion killer. He was a giant leveling fighter. He made sure he levels anyone who defied the armies of Israel. I'm not going to read again the scripture that I read. read but you saw how the Bible testifies of this man who killed a lion. And he killed a bear. And he said, anything that I've done, I'm able to do to this giant Philistine. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. And I see a man that is presented, David. He was excellent. He had excellence all about him. He was an A-rated instrumentalist, sought after. If he was alive in this day, I don't know how much he would cost for us to book him. In the book of First Psalms, chapter 16, verse 8, 18 to 17, 17 to 18, verse 17 to 18, we hear Saul calling his servants. He says, find me a man who plays well. Find me a man who can take out these demons that I'm feeling and I'm hearing. Find me a, a man that plays well. Even Saul did not want noise. He did not want noise. One of the young men said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite, who is a skillful musician, a brave and a competent man, a warrior, a discerning, prudent, eloquent man. He is prudent and eloquent in speech. A handsome man, they added. Hallelujah. Amen. A handsome man. And the Lord is with him. This guy was a total package. Hallelujah. Skillful musician. He's challenging us, those who have talents, even in the music industry, that be skillful with your talent. So much so that if demons have to be cast out, they will be looking for you. As we track, I find a man, David, was a highly skilled leader. We see a man that was highly skilled. We see a man that was skilled in developing human potentials of other people. Track with me to 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 1 to 2. We see that David says, the Bible says, David departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brothers and all his father's house heard about it, they went down there with him. Everyone who was suffering hardships everyone who was suffering hardships everyone who was in debt everyone who was discontented they gathered to him and he became captain over them and the bible says there were about 400 men and when you track with the scriptures in second samuel chapter 23 which you're going to read in your own time you see a man that comforted these men he put them in line do you know that it's not easy to raise a man that is defeated, discontented, discouraged, depressed? But David, the Bible tells us, he was on point. He managed to take these men and develop their potentials. They did not know themselves. It's very easy for a man to lose himself, especially when he doesn't have money or provision or any resources. He loses his identity. 
He lose he he feels like nothing and you, it's difficult to get that man out of bed. Gosh, am I hitting nerves? It's it's one thing for us women to be at the discouragement point because we can still complain to our friends and yeah, but a man, a man dies inside. To resurrect that man will take a miracle. And when you track the scriptures, you see that David had to bring this man out of the gutters. May the Lord raise our men and protect them in Jesus' name. I know that fight. When you can see, when he, he cannot even talk because the mess is not messy. Oh, may you find courage in remind yourselves of who David was and what he conquered. Against all odds, you can rise. Against all odds, no matter how it looks. So David was a specialist in telling people who felt they were non-entities. You know when you feel that you are a nobody, your dignity is gone. You can't provide for your family. You can't provide for your wife. You feel like an, a non-entity. The Bible teaches us that there was a man called David. He turned those who felt like non-entities to some entities. Nobodies to somebody. May you receive the anointing this morning to resurrect and come back and remind, be reminded you are somebody. There is still potential inside of you. If David could dig it up out of those men, they, the Lord God Almighty himself can dig it out of you. Do not give up on your potential. It is still inside there. You must tell yourself before the service is over, I'm a lion killer. I'm a giant killer. I'm a bear killer. Oh, Karabashata Kadia. I have every confidence that God is raising lion killers. I have confidence that God is raising men and women in this church that are going to be giant slayers. Let's look at what were the odds that were against David, just in case you think that David came from a privileged home and, and, and David had the upper hand. The Bible firstly says that he was a person who came from rejection. His family rejected him. I mean, he almost missed the blessing. First Samuel 16, 1 Samuel 16.1-2 says, The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve for Saul when I have rejected him? As king over Israel, fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have chosen a king for myself amongst his sons. But Samuel said, How can I go? When Samuel he Saul hears about it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer from the head with you and say, I have come to sacrifice for the Lord. Psalms 27:10 says, Although my father and my mother have abandoned me. Eh? Yet the Lord will take me up and adopt me as his child. So it don't matter how much your mother and your father can reject you. Whether they supported you, don't support you, they don't like what you're doing, they just feel that you're not going to amount. Listen, the Lord is ready to take you up and adopt you. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. It doesn't matter who doesn't believe in you, as long as God believes in you, that's what matters. God believes in me. I believe in me. I believe in my God. I believe in this. This belief must happen. As long as God, your maker believes in you. Your maker believes that you have a purpose. Your maker is counting on you to believe in yourself, to believe in him, to make sure that your purpose will come to pass. Believe in the purpose of God for your life. What did David face? The second thing he faced, he was undiscovered. He was tending to the sheep somewhere at the back of the field somewhere. Undiscovered with all that potential, tending to sheep. Chief pianist, the orchestra stages were waiting for him, but he was undiscovered. He was undercover. He looked like one small boy. Nobody ever thought he could bring down a giant. A man undercover who could not step out. 
until it was time. A man with covered potential. And many of us, we go through the journeys of life where you're just waiting for that break. If somebody can just give you an opening so that they can see your potential. You are in a job. You are doing something that you have not, it's not, it has nothing to do with your talents. This thing that you are doing is just a means to an end. Hello? This thing that you are currently working is just a means to an end. It's not the talent. The Bible says your gift shall bring you before kings. Right? But some of you, you find yourself, and don't despair. Somebody says, ha, ah, pastor, I clean people's houses. Don't despair. You are just, it's your potential that is just uncovered. But nothing, no experience is wasted. Do you know that? Do you know that in that cleaning of that house, you are learning something? It's a waiting room where you are learning something. And you are going to use it. Amen. Your talents will be discovered. Amen. Find me a man. While he was tending to the sheep, Saul said, find me a man. I am troubled. Find me a man who is skillful, who has got the talent. They may look like they don't need you. There is a season where they will need you. I always make a joke and say, they may say they don't need a pastor. When the coffin has to go down, honey, they need a pastor. <laughs> when the coffin has to go down, they need a pastor. They may not want premarital counseling, but when the I do has to be said, they will need a pastor. They may try to bypass the pastor and go to home affairs, but when divorce is needed and when they suddenly need counseling, they will remember, oh, I think God needs to intervene. Hallelujah. When the doctor sees to have answers and there's no medication, they remember they need a pastor. Hallelujah. Bring me a man that is skillful. So if you know you carry inside yourself the potential that is an answer to somebody who has a question, you carry the fire and you feel like there is no possibility of expression at the current moment, my sweetheart, keep the fire burning. Man of God, keep the fire burning. Carry the fire around. The moment of expression is coming. That moment of expression is coming. When God gives you and opens that door of expression, don't despair and say he did not give me a Maserati. Sweetie, even if he gave you a bicycle, you will overtake at the speed of lightning. You will overtake at the speed of a fighter jet. You will over. Listen, don't say, oh God, how can you give me a Toyota car? You will overtake. It will be like a joke, like joke, when you reflect back. There are people sitting with lands that they are owning and they look back and they say, I never thought I could own three pieces of land. I never thought there could ever be three vehicles in my garage. I never thought. As long as you don't give up on believing in it. Don't give up on believing in it. They that, that have it, they started some way. You just need to believe in yourself enough to take that one step and say, I'm going. Success against all odds. I'm willing. I'd rather lose sleep, but one thing is for sure. You tell yourself, I will succeed no matter what. Amen. What was fighting David? His background. In the book of 1 Samuel 16, 11, Samuel said to Jesse, are all your sons here? Jesse replied, there is still one left, the youngest. He's tending to the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, send word and bring him because he will, we will not sit down to eat the sacrificial meal until he comes here. So those that tried to overtake, <laughs> we will not sit down until everybody's at the table. May they notice that you are missing until they sit down. Nobody is sitting down until you are at that table. Nobody is sitting down until you are called. If it's your time, it's your time. If they have to postpone the appointment, they have to postpone it until you show up. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. They will have to postpone it. That chair in your workplace, those of you who are listening to me online, 
that chair in the workplace, it will not be filled until you are promoted. It will not be filled until you are promoted. Until you are appointed in that company, that position cannot be filled. Hallelujah. So this man had to fight the background of his existence. Even his father wanted to hold meetings without him. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. So the devil knew that there was a David with all this talent. There was a David, a young man who could kill giants and do all sorts of things. Why do you think that is? The devil was not perturbed. Why? The devil doesn't care what you can do as long as nobody ever discovers you. That is why I said undiscoveredness. So the, the devil does not want people to know what you can do. Because once you get that opening, that one door, he knows he's finished. Once you know who you are, Minister I'm too, and you act out on who you are, you have finished him. The day you rise above and do what you are called to be, where you are meant to be, he knows he's finished. So what he does, he tries to keep you in the background. He tries to send every form of attack imaginable. Stupid little things. He keeps you distracted with your child that is going through something. He keeps you distracted by small, small things because now you are not gathering momentum because you are not focused on this thing. You are now complaining about this and that. Oh, that one. Hey, my mother. That. Focus. Where am I meant to be? Where you get to where you are meant to be, you begin to conquer all these generational problems, all these challenges that are needing you to answer. Because the devil wants to keep you busy with other things. That's why these days, I always say, God, help me to think like a man. You know a man is not in every place and thinking 15,000 things. He, if, the question, if the answer to the question is money, let's focus on how do we get the money. Hallelujah. There are some prayer points that are not needing any answers. They just need money. Come on, somebody. <laughs> There's a prayer point that just needs money. If you summarize the whole speech and the summary and the essay of it, it's money. Money answers all. <laughs> money answers. Money cuts down dialogue for days. You are talking, you will be fighting with your wife in the house for three days talking about, the whole point is, where is the money? Where is the money? How much do you have in your hand? Put the money down. So let's be clear. Let's just attack this thing. Where is the money? Hallelujah. He was continually exposed to dangers. A lot of hazards in his life. Why? Because when the enemy knows you have a future, when the enemy knows you have a destiny, he will make sure that you encounter every hazard imaginable. Your car will break like nobody's business. God, I come against the cars that will break in Jesus' name. Father, give us good engines, give us fresh engines and new engines in Jesus' name. I don't know who that is for, but that is a <laughs> new car. Apostle says, it's not, we are not fixing cars. We just need new cars now. Please, God. We just need new cars. What was this man facing? There was people who were envious of him. A murderous, envious person against him. Jealousy from his master. He faced jealousy. So you're going to have to pray against jealousy those who are envious to the point of death that they want to kill you. 1 Samuel 18, verse 10 to 11 says, Now it came about on the next day that an evil spirit from God came forcefully on Saul, and he raved madly inside his house while David was playing the harp within his hand, as usual. And there, a spear in Saul's hand. Saul held the spear, for he thought, I will pin David down to the wall. But David evaded him twice. May the Lord provide you with a window of escape when they try to pin you down. May the Lord provide you with a window of escape when they try to pin you down. Those that want good people to die will never succeed. Those that are looking for your life will never succeed in the name of Jesus. 
When I checked and I looked at the things that this man was having to fight, I saw that he was a man that was anointed. Yes, he had oil on his head, but he had no throne. Oil on your head, no vacant throne. God, I'm caring so much. I'm so blessed. I'm so anointed. I'm so loaded. But where exactly am I supposed to rule? So when we are going to stand up and when we're going to pray, you're going to pray and say, God, thank you for the anointing. Now show me my throne. Thank you for the anointing. Where is my throne? You will not be the kind of person that has the unction without ever having a possibility of a place to function. Amen. Just remember these prayer points I said. Eh? God, give me my position to function. Amen. I will function at the junction. Amen. I carry an unction. I have to function while it's still day. The oil on your head can no longer be detained. Oh, you caught it, Minister. I said the oil on your head can no longer be detained. In the mighty name of Jesus. This man called David faced a lot of betrayal from unbelievable quarters. 1 Samuel 23, 1 says, Then they told David, saying, Behold, the Philistines are fighting against Kila and plundering, robbing the threshing floors of the grain. Ayah. But what did he do? Because now that we have had the problems, Pastor Fortune, what did he do to change his situation? Father, help us to end whatever situation that is detaining us from taking up our position in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Maintain your belief and your passion for God. Maintain your commitment to the Father's assignment too. Maintain your commitment to your personal development and the development of your potentials, three. Number four, maintain the commitment to the defense of the name of God. Amen. Don't be so defeated that you feel like God don't exist and you just want to just chicken out. David spoke to the men who were standing by him. What will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes disgrace of his taunting from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that has defied the armies of the Lord? Maintain a constant commitment to going the extra mile in everything you are doing. I hope you are making notes. Are you going to listen to the video after? I can see you guys are like, go the extra mile, sis. Go the extra mile. He, he could have continued with his life, but he said, wait. Bring that uncircumcised Philistine here. I know it's not in my job description, but I'm willing to take on an extra job description. Go the extra mile. When you go the extra mile in life, you go to an extra height. Amen. Talk to me. Amen. When I want to go to the extra height in life, I go the extra mile, and then people recognize. Influential people, people in leadership recognize. I will go the extra mile. I will attain extra heights. Be committed to lifting up others and you will also be lifted. When you lift up others, you will be surprised at the doors that will open for you. You will even laugh and say, what did I do to deserve this? I didn't know people were watching when I was helping others. And that has been the story of my life as well. That's when you do things without thinking, oh, am I going to get a reward? No, you continue. Before you know it, uh -uh, somebody walks up and becomes a blessing. Minding your own thing. When people are remembering you, you have not arrived yet. When people don't remember, when you don't get a bank notification, an SMS, oh, may you aspire for that height. When the SMS notification comes in, you say, when you call the person, what is it for? Just, just you are wonderful. I just wanted to be a blesser to you. Hallelujah. <laughs> you guys are still wondering, but where are these people who are supposed to give me this bank notification? Hallelujah. Amen. So far ahead of signs and wonders, make an impact. Make an impact in people's lives. Sow seeds in people's lives. I promise you. 
at the least moment when you expect it, God will remember you. God will remember you and cause people to remember you because he's not going to come like a burning bush. He's going to cause people to remember you and you'll be wondering. Some of you have already started experiencing the kindness of God because God has already remembered you. Otherwise, you know you would be dead by now. Hallelujah. Amen. Who is taking steps after your steps? Who is looking at you and mimicking you? Are you making an imp impact in people's life? Make up your mind to teach and defend the word of God. Teach the word of God. Tell others about this God that has given you a breakthrough. Let's rise to our feet. Make up your mind. I will be committed in the things of God. I will lay hands on others. I will help others to rise up. I will help others to acquire the fire that I have acquired in Jesus' mighty name. I will not be like anybody else who wants to destroy their master. In fact, I will be a servant who is loyal until the end. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. David refused to kill the king. Hallelujah. He rather chose that he would wait until God gave him the throne. Hallelujah. Make up your mind. What did I teach you? I said he was addicted to, 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 to God, God's house. Be addicted to the divine direction of God. I've been praying, teaching in the morning sessions, I think, for the past two days. I think it was today, this morning, I was talking about uncommon direction. Be addicted to receiving the direction of God. What does God want to do? Because if I take the steps that God wants me to do, if I, if I listen to his guidance, then I cannot fail. When he relocates me to a position, I will, I will reap in that land. I'm not disobedient. I go where he sends me to. I do what he says I must do. Hallelujah. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 38, when he was besieged, he said, David went and inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue, shall I overtake, will I recover all? And what did he say? He waited for the Lord, and the Lord gave him the go ahead. He says, pursue, overtake, for surely you shall recover all. When you move with that kind of assurance, you know that the GPS cannot mislead you. Talk to me, somebody. Yeah. And while you are on this planet Earth, decide to work. This world is not for sissies, it's not for lazy people. Work. While you wait on the Lord, work, work, work. Continue to perform your duties. Whether you are serving those that are occupying your throne currently, continue to work because very soon God is going to dismantle them from those thrones. If they are not rightfully there, if it is not their time, if it's not their season or their season is expired, God will rightfully place you there. Then what do you need to do? Be given to commitment, continuous sacrifice. The life of serving God is a life of sacrifice, I won't lie. I shared a bit during the week, during the prayers. I said, I think it was 2004, I had to give up a two-seater vehicle, all because I had to carry people to church. Let me encourage you. All because my pastor said, when you went to the garage, I thought it was a, t I was so excited. I only drove the vehicle for a few months. It was a sports car. Pastor T. This is a word for you. I had to give it. I will show you the picture. I get, he said, when you come for church service and all night, how many people can sit in your car? I didn't complain. I just said, okay. I went and traded it in. For the work of the Lord was bigger. For the work of the Lord was bigger. I had to make the sacrifice. So continue to make the sacrifices. Oh Lord, remember on David's behalf all his hardships and afflictions, for he swore into the Lord and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob. I absolutely will not enter my house nor go into my bed. I certainly will not permit my eyes to sleep nor my eyelids to slumber until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. I will not sleep. Pray for your apostle. Because if this man had his way, we would probably have to sell our assets for the house of God. Sometimes <laughs> he has that kind of heart that sacrifices. Pray for God to bless him. I said, I think I've hinted, you guys have known how hard last year was. When we went through seasons and patches, you would not know that we didn't even have food in our house. 
we would not know where the data would come from for us to broadcast. I know he doesn't want me to share all this. But at that point, we will still show up. We didn't know how we were getting to church where the petrol was to come from. And at that point, imagine you are leaving your house and somebody says, is there a loaf of bread in the dinner? And I said, yes, there's a full loaf. I bought it yesterday. He says, bring it. I say, where is it going? Just in case somebody needs it in church. So we always carry stuff because there's somebody that needs to be uplifted. And somehow God kept us throughout that whole season and he keeps keeping us. Close your eyes and just lift up your voice to heaven and just thank him. I hope you learned something this morning. Father, thank you. Whatever you did for David that made him to live where he was to where he had, a point where he arrived, Father, do it for me. Open up your mouth and pray and ask the Lord, God, do it for me. What you I de 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 kaparu de konte kapa. I a de 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 kontan kapalada. I a de de ruske vele barada. I de 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 katalaba. In the name of Jesus, Father, I do. Oh God, that help you gave to David, oh God, lay it on me in Jesus' mighty name. That help, those helpers of destiny that you sent to David, oh God, send them to me now in Jesus' mighty name. Oh Ramashika Takala Bahasa Takadia Bahasa. Rosoto Dodo Boshika Takadia. Once you spoke in a vision to your godly ones and said, I have given help to the one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found David, my son, my servant, my holy oil has anointed him. Father, anoint every single person under the sound of my voice. This morning, oh God, what you did for David, do it for me. Every grace that was upon David, oh God, let that grace rest on me. The grace that is upon this house, upon this church, oh God, let it rest on me. In Jesus' mighty name, the grace that I need to train myself, the grace that I need to raise me. Lord, let it come my way now. Let the grace that needs to come and equip me to do what I need to do come my way now in Jesus' mighty name. Every potential that I require to find expression, my Father, open the doors. Let it be uncovered. Let it be discovered. Let me be discovered. Let doors open for me in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, God, we are taking off into a greater height, into a higher height, in the name of Jesus, that grace is upon me. That grace is upon me. That thing that you did for David. Come on, saints, open up your mouth. If you do not a believer that is backsliding, open up your mouth and declare that grace on my life. Let it come upon me. Let the help that was upon the, the King David come upon me now. That, that help. My God, I receive the help. I receive the help. I receive the help in Jesus' mighty name. I receive the help. I receive the help in the mighty name of Jesus. Tokopando comprende caso bele che tamba lande kai a libri a tamele do uske bele tai endo copala da bande carude de calada yagabaro de de calamando capada a prege de capalada father in the name of jesus we thank you and we bless your name by the power of the holy ghost and take a vada a yeque balata eco barande katom bele de kai and to kababa kababa kabada idoko bando konde kabalata idika burade de katimande kabalada ando ke brigado kous ke veleta ya ibarando kando kabalada adegebe de ki baba kabada katando ka iya kabado konde ka we thank you my father 
in the name that is above every other name. Ikabalando kapandoka andonde katumbe de dekota idoko bande kande kabalata elota lagabala katoma rade kalata kualada endo kovande eya gabalito kaba irando kopala da bande kabalata aronde katola balande katala mahanda eko barade likonde kambalata igabada kebodaba igodaba itoko pando katombe dikibidi katala manda kata endo kavia da bande katalaba zanto kabalata la mahando kombalata ekabala tonde kapala da kabalata ka lanto kopande kapala Gaduas Eveleta, Ikapala Toliban de Catola Barra de Calata, Ikepota Capala Talaman de Catalaba, Lento Copando Copan de Capala Gaba, Lato Capala Gadu Capala Talaba, Lanto Capala Mahan de Capala Gadaya, Zando Capa, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I set myself as a living sacrifice. Holy Ghost, set me on fire. I set myself as a living sacrifice. Holy Ghost, set me on fire. I set myself as a living sacrifice. Holy Ghost, set me on fire. I give myself as a living sacrifice. Holy Ghost, set me on fire. I give myself as a living sacrifice. Holy Ghost, set me on fire. I give myself as a living sacrifice. Holy Ghost, set me on fire. I give myself as a living sacrifice. Holy Ghost, set me on fire. I give myself as a living sacrifice. Holy Ghost, set me on fire. I am, I am, I am, I am, keep me on fire. I am, I am, I am, set me on fire. I am. Set me on fire. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh, set me on fire. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh, set me on fire. Yahweh, 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 set me on fire. Yahweh, 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 set me on fire, set me on fire. Lord, set me on fire, set me on fire, Lord, set me on fire, set me on fire, Lord, set me on fire. 
set me on fire. Set me on fire. Set me on fire. Oh. Would you set me on fire? Set me on fire. 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 Would you set me on fire? Set me on fire. Set me on fire. Set me on fire. Would you set me on fire? Set me on fire. Would you set me on fire? Whenever fire is available, anything that was not planted by God is consumed by the fire. Hebrews 12 verse 29 declares, Hebrews 12 verse 29 declares that our God is not a burning, our God is a consuming fire. He consumes. So when we say set me on fire and everything that is around me that is not of God, may it be judged by the fire of God. I don't know if I'm communicating to somebody here. I said, I don't know if I'm communicating to somebody here. Everything that God has not planted in my life by the power of the Holy Ghost may fire judge my matter. I don't know if I'm communicating to somebody here. Oh God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to be seated if you can. Just give me a marker in that black zip on the sides. Praise God. Yesterday I was praying to God. All right. Oh, you brought it. You found it. You are prophetic. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yesterday I was praying. And um, after, after we prayed, the Lord, the Lord showed me something that I was not um, really focusing on. But it will become one of the things that will bring a, what do you call it? Um, sometimes we pray for open doors, but God has deposited, has given us keys. And most of the times you realize that while you are praying, God is saying, apply and act. So you will be praying for an open door and God will be saying, apply. I hear what I'm saying. I hear what I'm saying. And sometimes you realize that some of these potentials, giftings and anointings, you see them throughout the period of your life. There are, there are certain abilities you have, but you minimize the use and the potential of those potentials and giftings. Yet you realize that what made people great were small things. And most of the times we, we, we major on the minor things. Yet God wants to raise you, lift you, and elevate you through those things you are minimizing. I don't know if I'm communicating to somebody. It took the interpretation of a dream in a prison for Joseph to be risen and be called to the palace. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He, he did not wait to prophesy to a king. He prophesied to someone who was not a king. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. He, he, he took jo David to kill a lion in the beard that it was his training to killing a Goliath. I, am I communicating to somebody? Am I communicating to somebody here? Am I communicating to somebody? There are certain things you might not be looking at, but those things will be the reason why God will distinguish you. It is why God will distinguish you. And realize that uh, what God uses most of the times, uh, most of the things, 
this scripture is written in Romans that God uses the, 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 the things that are downgraded, things that are unfocused on, the foolish things of this world to show his glory. So there are certain things you are calling foolish abilities on you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. I always tell people that th th there is a man who sang a song Amazing grace, how sweet thou sound. It was just a hymn until it, until somebody who is not the man who wrote the song held the mic and sang the song and God brought wings to the song. And without a preacher, people in England started weeping for their sins because of a song. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So, there is something that if you go to Ephesians chapter number 4, right there, you realize that there is something that I realized and I saw through scripture. That I realized and I saw through scripture. Because most of the times we get to a place where we get confused as we live life. I want you to understand something that the life you live, we operate from two dimensions. Look at your two dimensions. Two dimensions. Hallelujah. You realize that we have the natural world and we have the supernatural world. Hallelujah. So every man operates in two dimensions. There is the natural, say the natural, natural. and there is the supernatural. Now, you realize that in as much as we have these two dimensions. These two dimensions or these two places have even become a place of conflict. Because even when we talk about the gospel, it has to operate in these two senses. So in as much as this man, if we are to talk about the word, let's say of God, The word of God has to operate into these two things. This natural world and the supernatural world. And it operates that the word of God becomes a gate also to the natural world and the supernatural world. And do you know what begins to happen, what God began to show me? The biggest conflict of mankind is when we talk about the natural world, we are talking about the mind and the intellect. Right? So here we have the mind. And in the supernatural, we have the spirit. And as a believer, you get to a place where you need to be very, 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 very discerning. <clears throat> we are in a world where everybody goes on social media, takes a clip of Pastor Fortune's message. Plaster it there and put their own opinion. <laughs> they might not have listened to the whole message, but that clip can destroy a person's entire years in ministry. Because when we talk about warfare, we must be very careful that we might think that warfare is only fighting demons. Even demons use people. Yes, yes, yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Am I communicating to somebody here? Yes. I said, am I communicating to somebody here? So as I was studying, as I was studying in the morning, I realized that as I was studying, the Lord began to whisper since yesterday. And say, he said, go and speak to my people. And remember, I'm not just speaking to only us who are in this building. But to everybody who will listen to this message, those that are online. I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost. May the Lord protect you from confusion in Jesus' name. 
I said, may the Lord protect you from confusion in the name and the blood of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So in Ephesians chapter number 4, from verse number 11. Praise God. Praise God. Where is 11 here? And he gave some to be apostles and some to be prophets. And some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Remember, teachers, it's not some. Some were given to be apostles. Some were given to be prophets. Some were given to be evangelists. And some were given to be pastors. And teachers. If you operate in any office and you are not a teacher, you are a fraud. Because if you cannot teach what you do, then what you do is not original. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. I hear you, sir. So everybody, they were delegated some, but he said, and teachers. Because we have people that run around saying, I am just a prophet. I am not a teacher. If you are a prophet, it means you know the pathways of God. Because you have to get to a place where you grow in what you carry and teach others what you carry. That is why the Bible says that they were given. For why were they given? For the perfecting of the saints. How will you perfect a saint if you can't teach the saint? A saint cannot be perfected by receive your car or your name is called Adora or Dorica. A saint is perfected by being told, I am a prophet of God. This is how God speaks to me. This is how God will speak to you. And this is the protocol of the voice of God. Amen. Am I communicating to somebody? Am I communicating to somebody? So sometimes that is the reason why we need apostles who come and speak and not care about your feelings. Because sometimes it is the pampering of feelings that makes the gospel of God to become a fraud. Oh. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Do you know there are people that were rebuked and the day they were rebuked they left church. It is only a snake that when you disturb it, it becomes angry. <laughs> that's why there are that's why there are members, numbers, and mambas. <laughs> My communicating somebody. My communicating somebody. My communicating somebody. Even Jesus heard some of them. 70 people left Jesus. He was left to 12. My communicator in somebody. My communicator in somebody. So you will see people fight and some are speaking of doctrine. Sir, doctrine is for the natural world, the mind. But doctrine will not affect the spiritual world. Doctrine will not cast out a devil. You can be skilled in interpreting scriptures, but never undermine the spiritual. Because we are in a world where the devil is making sure, Jesus says that kingdom divided will not stand. The devil has gone into a place where he is understood. How am I going to fight them? Let me make them fight each other. And the reason we do not have people that understand how to teach the ways of God. 
So that generation of fathers many years ago that were moving with the Lord tried to pass on the message. But the message was being passed to proud, braggadocious people that were not listening, thinking that because they are older, they do not know anything. Hear me? No matter how much and how old you are, you can never have more used clothes than your father. Am I communicating somebody? A generation, some of you, we have history of knowing where we are going for crusades, knowing when we are going to the mountain. But there's a generation that is coming. They never had the experience of what is called a tent meeting. They never had the experience of what is called going to the mountain for seven days, for ten days. Their life was all on social media. They do not have an experience and an encounter. Where will we find teachers who will teach the ways of God? Am I communicating with somebody? Am I communicating with somebody? Am I communicating with somebody? My God. So we we are now in a place where we now have a war. The spiritual is not a matter of doctrine. It's a matter of encounter. It's a matter of encounter. So while people are fighting about this one is not speaking scriptures correctly, this one, hear me, hear me. There are, there, there are things about the spirit that you cannot by any means interpret until you are operating from that realm. So the Bible says they were called for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. Who is to work the ministry? It's not the pastor. It's the saints. By why? Why do we have many people? We are having church people. Dozens and thousands of church people that are seated on the benches and yet not by any means bring any benefit to the kingdom. Because the fivefold are called to perfect the saints so that the saints can work the ministry. So why are you seated? Because ministry is not for the fivefold. It is for the saints. That after I teach you about how to, how to operate in the room of the spirit and the prophetic, when you go back to your workplace, while you are seated, you are the rider where you are. You are the ambassador where you are. You are the one who is to work out the ministry. But we are having pumpkins that are seated in church waiting for somebody to lift them. So that, so that they, 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 can be, they, can, they can work for the means for the edification of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of faith. Why are we having divisions? The problem is that saints are not equipped. Because Paul says, if we can operate in a way that is speaking, we will become to the unity of faith. Unity of faith, it means operating in one mind. Am I communicating with somebody? Am I communicating with somebody? Am I communicating with somebody here? Some say, me, me, I'm, me, I'm just an intercessor. I, I don't do other things. Me, I'm just a prophet. I don't do other things. Me, I'm just, me, I'm just a, an evangelist. I, I don't do other things. Hear me. And hear me very well. Until you have gone into a place where you are equipped. And we come to the unity of faith as the saints. The Bible says... That we get to a place where we have the full stature of God. Not half. Not half. When the knowledge of God is brought into you, is is pumped into your veins, that you carry the full stature of Christ. That when you are walking, we see Jesus. We see Jesus. You cannot be a Christian until you are Christ-like. Everybody is coming to the house of the Lord. I am a Christian. But throughout your entire life, the percentage of your, your, your character, there's no Christ in you. 
So even when you say in the name of Jesus, let, 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 me, let, me, let me explain. How do we pray? Prayers. This is how we end, right? In the name of Jesus. Now, do you know what in the name means? Because when we talk about a name, we are talking about a character. What is, what is Jesus? What is Christ? Christ means the Christos, the anointed one and his anointing. So when you pray and say in the name of Jesus, you are saying in the character of Jesus. Imagine praying your whole prayer and at the end you are supposed to say in the character of Jesus. Which character are you showing? Why am, why are my prayers not being heard? Your prayers are not being heard because you have not yet carried the full stature of God. So when you finish your prayer and say in the name of Jesus, in the spirit you are scanned. This way you are using the name of Jesus to enter. Are you a true representative? The character is not there. Pastor, no matter how much you breathe fire, you are a fornicator. The character is not there. I hear what I'm saying. Amen. I hear what I'm saying. Amen. I hear what I'm saying. Amen. I am a no more sakabalata in the name of Jesus. Father, I decree. I decree that Land Rover in the, We look at you. Which character? Because you, you, you are praying for that car because somebody you, you are competing with bought a car that is better than that. Yeah. There are people that do not have to pray for it. Uh-uh. There's a song that, that says, I know the Lord will make a way for me if I live a holy life. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying? There is a life that attracts. That's why the Bible says, seek first the kingdom. Mm. Am I communicating with somebody? Amen. Am I communicating with somebody? Amen. Matthew chapter 6, verse what? 33. They will say, seek the kingdom. What are you seeking? What are you seeking? Kingdom. 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 And what? Righteousness. Righteousness. Do you know what this means? Righteousness. Do you know that time when you are praying oh, you, and, you, and you are bragging, oh, I thank God, you know, for the past one month, I have not sinned. Heaven is not clapping hands. Heaven is saying you have come, you have come back to your senses. When you are celebrating, men of God, do you know that I was a, I was a heavy murderer? I'm no longer a murderer. Heaven is saying, no, it's not something to celebrate. It is the character of the anointing to showcase the anointing. It is the character of your witch to practice witchcraft. Uh, you are not hearing me. You are not hearing me. You are not hearing me. It is the character of the righteous to live righteously. Amen. You don't know what righteousness can do. Do you know David spoke and he spoke a secret. He says righteousness exalts a nation. Oh, when I was reading this scripture yesterday, I realized that there are certain things we are praying for that just need somebody to live a lifestyle. Imagine if righteousness can force a nation to rise. People are praying for elevation. David is saying righteousness exalts. So seek the kingdom, the king. Seek the king and his domain. It is a culture. 
it is a culture. When you're being sick, live under a certain constitution. Belong, belong. That, that's what this scripture is saying. I don't know how you interpret it. It's a belong. Get to a place where you understand where you belong. Get to a place where when you are sick, you, you are taking yourself to a DNA. I belong to a certain tribe. And I am to live righteously. It is the character of God. I say, how, how do I become righteous? Is it that if I don't steal? Hear me. This righteousness we are talking about, this righteousness we talk about, it's about faith. The Bible says, Abraham believed God and it was considered to him as righteousness. Amen. That's how you operate this righteousness. Abraham believed God and it was considered as righteousness. How do you believe? You surrender yourself to God. David says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. You cannot be ordered if you have not surrendered yourself. And order only comes to people that are under authority. So we have people that have gathered. We have people that have busy battling. And you look at them, you realize the biggest challenge we are now having is that we are having people that are too much opinionated out of an empty head. We have people that are too much opinionated out of an empty altar. An empty prayer life. You know, people cannot pray like that. How can you be praying doing that? That is not how you should pray. You, you, hey, hear me, hear me. You, you, your, own, your own kind of prayer has not changed your life. You cannot correct somebody operating under the healing anointing. Yet you have not even healed the person. If a person comes in your meeting sick, they come out dead. And learn. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are in a generation where we need the voice that will come and pierce and divide through the bone and the marrow, dividing the flesh from the spirit. Amen. Because if we do not defend the faith, we will end up having opinions, not the gospel. We will end up having facts, not faith. That's why we are always talking about power. But Apostle Paul spoke, and that scripture provoked me last week. He said, I did not come with the enticing words of the wisdom of men to, to, to excite you. But I came with the demonstration of the power of God. This kingdom that we came to, we are not orators. We are not orators. They speak outside. Here we don't orate. Here we prove. We show. Am I communicating to somebody? When God arrives in a place, it is seen. It is known. There is an atmosphere he carries. How can you be a child of God? You are at a real place and your presence is not felt. And your absence is not felt. It is time that we provoke the body of Christ. We understand that we operate from two dimensions. The word of the Lord, let it penetrate. Yes, from the spirit, we attain encounters. But after encounters, we come to the world to demonstrate the power of God. Jesus says, if you do not believe me, at least believe what you see. Am I communicating to somebody? There is a time when words are not to be spoken. I posted something this week, I think. I said, I said a little demonstration is far much better than a long explanation. Yeah. 
Jesus did not need to do a score before he heals. Jesus did not need to sit down and explain the basics before he heals. He would come, demonstrate the power of God. And all of them, when they see power, somebody say power. Somebody say power. You can never get to a place when you are a child of God and you carry power and be ignored. I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost wherever you are listening to me from, Jesus is tarry in Jerusalem and you receive the power. I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost with the same mouth I used to pray. I decree over your life may you carry the power of God. I said may you carry the power of God. I said may you you carry the power of God at your workplace carry power at your house carry power I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost which shall not fly over your house it is now a no fly zone carry power am I communicating to somebody here the Bible says the endless expectation of the creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God what are the sons of God those that are led by the spirit they are the sons of God. Jesus says, Tarry in Jerusalem until the Holy Ghost comes and you carry power. The Bible says, How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power. I decree, I say, Carry power. I say, Carry power. I say, Carry power. I say, Carry power. Oi. You can be a child of God and be on a rata. Am I communicating to somebody? The Bible declares, I was speaking. The Bible says in the book of Joshua, chapter number 10, the Bible says, Joshua said, Moon, the Bible says, God intervened in the battle that Joshua was fighting against the Ammonites. And the Bible says, God weaponized nature and hailstone started killing the Ammonites. When Joshua saw that God was using rain to kill the enemies. He said and he spoke to God and he says moon stop. Don't move. Sun stop. Don't move. There is a way you can become audacious. Yeah man tell me very well. Until I prevail let the sun stand. Until I just I, I reach my destiny. Let time stand. Until my purpose is fulfilled. Let time stand. In the name that is above every other name. Everything must wait until you prevail. Everything must wait until you overcome. Shout I carry power. Shout I carry power. Shout I carry power. Shout I carry power. Oh, am I communicating to somebody here? I loved it when Peter, the Bible says Peter and James were coming to the ghetto beautiful and when they arrived, there was a man asking for alms. They looked at him and they said, look at us. He looked at them. I heard the man say, silver and gold I have none, but such as I have. There is something you must distribute to the world. There is something you must give in your office. When they see you, they must understand you are a heavenly transformer. When they look at you, you are an electric distributor of heaven. Whoever touches you is imparted by power. There is nobody who will meet you and remain the same. Am I communicating to somebody? Anybody who shall meet you, their life shall change. I say carry power. I say carry power. I say carry power. 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 When you carry power, you can't be denied. There are prayers that are being prayed. And the reason why we are keeping on praying one prayer is because power is not available. How can you be denied when you carry power? Powerful people are not denied anywhere. They are begged for their presence. Everybody in this world is looking for power. But our own power is given very freely. The Bible says, seek the kingdom in this righteousness. There is a way when you operate as a kingdom citizen, you look at things, you say, this is not how things are supposed to be. Something has to change. Am I communicating to somebody?
Matthew 10 says, Behold, I give you the keys of the kingdom. We are not just told to seek the kingdom. Jesus already gave the keys. So you, you are looking for a place which you have the keys to enter. You are not hearing me. You are not hearing me. You are not hearing me. Jesus says, I've already given you the keys of the kingdom. So the keys are already available. The keys are already available. So while you are seeking, you are seeking for a door. I already have the key. And I'm going to enter. Once I enter there, there is a way I'm going to demonstrate this kingdom. The world must know. The world must see. The, most, the kingdom of this world has become the kingdoms of our God. This way of us raising porridge, palm cake, Christians must stop. Must stop. If you want pity party, you know, you know where to go. Kindergarten. Not in the house of God. We, 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 we are here to raise rugged people. We are here to raise people that are equipped by the word. The Bible says, after the apostle priest, the Holy Ghost came and confirmed the word. You can't just be talking like a teacher. Teaching primary school children. This is the kingdom of God. And the center of the kingdom is power. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. You are not powerful because of what you do. You are powerful because you are born into this kingdom. If you park a car, I hear many people say, you are, you, 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 are not, you are not prayerful, that is why you are not powerful. Hear me? If you park a car for seven years, will it not be a car? It's a car. Am yeah. <laughs> I communicating somebody? We, we, in the kingdom, I told you that, in the kingdom, we don't delegate time to pray. Every moment is prayer. We, do, we, we, we don't pray to God. We talk to God. Amen. That's why we don't pray in tongues. We speak in tongues. Yes. You, yes. Didn't, you didn't catch it. You didn't catch it. Yes. Yes. We, we don't pray in tongues. We speak yes. in tongues. You are going to carry power after today. Yes. I decree in the name of Jesus. Yes. In science, they say power is the potential to bring change. Yes. By the power of the Holy Ghost, the ability to bring change in the name that is above every other name. May God use that body to showcase his power. May God use your spirit to showcase his power. In the name that is above every other name. You are going back to your house today as you are going to pray. You are not going to operate in a place where you say, I feel the power. I don't. No, 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 no. You are going to feel the manifest glory of God. Everything around you shall be power. Am I communicating to somebody? Shout it again and say, I carry power. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Mighty God, mighty Father, you are starting a new thing. In Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Thank you, Father, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lives and destinies, they are going to be transformed by these people that are here. Amen. We are going to go out there, terrorize places. Father, in the name and the blood of Jesus, we expand the walls and the gates of this ministry in the spirit. Amen. I say we expand the walls and the gates of this ministry in the spirit. We expand the walls and the gates of this ministry in the spirit. Amen. May the ground in which you work on give you its strength. Amen. May nature help you to succeed. Amen. I say may nature help you to succeed. Amen. May nature help you to succeed. Amen. May nature help you to succeed. 
when they sit to devise your downfall, when they sit to plan your, your, your destruction, may the air they breathe suffocate them. May the air they breathe suffocate them. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We exalt your name by the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God be with you. Those that are watching online and those that are here, you are blessed. And may the good Lord show you grace in Jesus' name. If you are giving um, the details, I believe they are on the screen, or you can email us if the Lord has touched your heart. And um, may the Lord bless you with your tithe, your seed, your offering. May the Lord bless you. And I pray in Jesus' name, you will not fail, you will not fall, and you will not falter. May the Lord open doors for you, and may the Lord give you ideas and wisdom for you to go to your next level. In Jesus' name. The Bible declares in the book of Deuteronomy 8, verse 18. You shall remember the Lord your God, for he is the one that gives you power to prosper. May the Lord give you the power, the ability to prosper. May the Lord stir up something in you that will cause everything you do to be prosperous. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, you are the head and not the tail. I say you are the head and not the tail. In the name and the blood of Jesus, may the Lord take you from the back side of life to the front side of life. In the name and the blood of Jesus. 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 Everybody who has stood and vowed that you shall not end this year by the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody is about to die because of you. If they said over their dead body, surely over their dead body they shall die. Anybody who was operating witchcraft activities over your marriage, your finances, your workplace, may that hand be cut off in the name of Jesus. Praise God. God bless you. God be with you. Let us meet um, on our uh, protocol breaking prayers online. Invite somebody. And join the WhatsApp groups, the Telegram groups, uh, so that you keep updated and in touch. May God bless you. And uh, this is our, we are on our, all right, we are still on our journey, our fifth day, praise God, of our 30 days. So if you, if you do not have, um, if you do not have um, the prayer document, I advise you, enter the groups, email us so that you get that document. Print it. It will help you while praying. Uh, it is loaded. Praise God. So, may God bless you. May God be with you. See you online in Jesus' mighty name.